Cody is a really fantastic media player. The area where it falls down, unfortunately, is the amount of space that the app takes up, the amount of impact it has on a system like a Fire TV stick, a Fire TV cube, or even another Android box or an Android-based TV. It's absolutely huge. I mean, mine takes up 807 megabytes that's made up of 660 megabytes for the data 147 megabytes for the application and you've also got nearly 90 megabytes for the cache that is taking up almost a gigabyte out of the really usable three or to four gigabytes that I have on my Fire Stick. Now, obviously there's nothing I can do about the application. It is what it is, that's the size. But in this video, I aim to get the data down, which is really the part that's taking up the most amount of space on Kodi on my Fire Stick. I'm hoping to get that down to a more reasonable level. We're gonna show you how you can do that. Stick around. All the details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So as I say, this takes up quite a bit of space on an Android device, especially as many Android devices really only come with about four gigabytes of usable space. If you're lucky and you've got a more advanced, if you've got a 4K Mac second generation or a Fire TV Cube, then obviously you've got more space. But it's a good idea to try and reduce the amount of data that's being used on your stick or your cube or your TV, because generally things will run better if there's more free space. So let's just go back a step. There you go. So I've got 874 megabytes available out of 5.28 gigabytes on my Fire Stick. Now that is not good. I always say it's best to have at least one gigabyte free on your stick to have it working at its best. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into Kodi. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the Media Center app, just as I normally would, wait for it to load up, then go to the cog at the top of the screen, middle button, and then go into system right down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Go down to add ons and then go across and then down to unknown sources. Now make sure that's turned on. Now you will get this warning if you're turning it on, just go across to yes, middle button, then back button on the remote control once. Go up to file manager, top left, middle button. And then what we wanna do is we wanna go down to add source, middle button. With none highlighted, middle button again. And then just type in the box like I have HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash PNO64 full stop GITHUB full stop IO forward slash REPOSITORY full stop PENO64. Pause this video if you need to make a note of this. Then make sure that OK is highlighted in the keyboard area, middle button on the remote, and then just go down to OK just at the bottom of the screen there, middle button. And then you want to go into repository.peno. 64. And then you want to press the back button on the remote control once, go across to add-ons, middle button, go down to install from zip file, middle button, and then just go to yes, and then middle button. Go down to repository.peno64, middle button, go into repository.peno64, and then there'll be some numbers after it. That might change in time. Mine's got 1.5.zip, but doesn't matter, just go into wherever it says repository.peno64, middle button, and then leave it until it says Peno64 repository add-on installed in the top right-hand corner, and then go up to install from repository, middle button, go, go down to Peno64 repository, middle button, Go down to program add-ons, middle button, and then go down to EZ maintenance plus, middle button. And then you wanna make sure that installs highlighted in the bottom right-hand corner, middle button. Sorry about a lot of the middle buttons here. And wait until it says EZ maintenance plus add-on installed. And there it actually says clean complete. So if we press the middle button on the remote control and then middle button again with configure highlighted along the bottom there, 
you will see here there's an option to auto clean the cache at startup. Make sure that's switched on, i.e. it's over to the right. You can just leave that as is, go to OK, middle button, and then just press the back button and keep pressing the back button until you're back to the main screen in Kodi. And I'm just going to go into the program add-ons in the add-on section. And if I go down to maintenance there and then highlight clear cache, middle button, and then highlight clear packages, middle button, and then highlight clear thumbnails, middle button. And let's just go back to the main menu in uh, the Fire Stick and go across to settings and then down to applications and down to manage installed applications. As you can see there, there's a massive difference. I've got 1.39 gigabytes now free on my Fire Stick. If I go into manage installed apps and if I go down and find Kodi, and there you can see my data usage has gone down to a minuscule 102 megabytes. That's great. The cache has gone up slightly, but to be quite honest with you, if I wipe the cache and then go into Kodi, that's only going to come back every time. So don't worry too about that. Don't worry too much about that. When I go into the easy maintenance app, I've got the option there to clear the cache and I will still do that because this is the internal cache for the app. So that counts towards the data still. So uh, do all three of these, do these on a regular basis, make sure that it's switched on so it does do some kind of maintenance every, so, every time you start Kodi. But the key thing is, is to go into the program add-on, the easy maintenance, go into maintenance, and then just go and highlight all three of these, middle button on the remote control, wait for the uh, maintenance clean completed message come up, go down to clear packages, wait for the clean clear, clear packages complete to come up, then go down to clear thumbnails, and then wait for that to come up. Come out of the app, and like I say, you would see a difference there in the amount of free space you've now got on your device. Straight away, I saw it. I mean, even doing it again there, I've got slightly a little bit more free space on my device. And if I go into manage installed applications and look at the app again, as you can see, I'm now only taking up 102 megabytes on the data. So in total, I'm taking up 249 megabytes. Okay, the cache is still there still taking up quite a bit. And like I say, just to prove a point, if I clear the cache, so let's just clear it by pressing the rewind button and okay, that there you go. As you can say, the cache is zero bytes, but I'm gonna go into, let's launch the application and I'll come back out of it again after it's launched. And we'll just see what the cache is like. And as you can see, I've got that blue bar at the bottom, which means it's clearing the cache and it's going in and I'm gonna come straight out of it. Let's exit out and you'll see, like I say, that cache, it will have come back to around about 89, 90 megabytes. So there's not really much you can do about that. That's only a temporary thing. There you go, as you can see there, cache is, has gone back. So that, that will only wipe it temporary. If you're not planning to use the app for a while, then by all means go down, clear the cache just to give you a bit more. So there you go, that guide showed you how you can stop this app from taking up too much space on your Fire TV Stick, Fire TV Cube, or even Android devices too. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, consider hitting that thanks button and making a donation to this channel. Or if you can't do that, then have a look in the description down below. We've got some great links down there for you to various things, including my Amazon shop, which contains all the things I love at the moment on Amazon, Fire TV sticks, Fire TV cubes, and VPNs. Buying, subscribing, and donating really does help Help support this channel. It helps me to be able to dedicate more time to spend researching to bring you these great videos. And whilst you're at my YouTube channel, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos for you right here, right now, covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe 
even save you some time and money. And if you do see any videos that you think your friends, your family or your work colleagues might like to see, then please don't forget to share these videos on your social media timelines. You can check me out on X. I'm at CWTEK. You can also check out my website. It's CWTEK.co.uk. Thanks for watching and speak to you again soon.